Hi there, Frank here from Remick. And in this short video, I'd like to say a few words about backtesting and optimization. I know that this topic can fill a library and the full scope is way beyond the possibilities of just one video. But let me try to help you get started here. So as we know, the edge has a lot of, potentially a lot of ingredients. I mean, target and stops and trailing stops and the markets we trade and the time frame we trade and even our psychological makeup and our given mood or abilities on a given day can play into what we do and the level of automation. This just never ends. There's so many ingredients and we have to make sure that it all fits. Otherwise, our edge is in danger. Now, with our products, you have purchased a high quality product, but Still, this is just like a piano. You still have to write your own in symphony. You still have to work out the details of your own edge, considering your account size, the markets you want to trade, your personal situation, time zone, preferred markets and time frames, and so many little details that all must fit and build into a successful edge. So, I think one way to get started though, this can get very overwhelming, but one way to get started is to simplify. And one way of simplifying things is just to imagine a scenario where, well, let me step back and just state the obvious that the edge has a two ingredients. One is the win-loss ratio, which means how many times bigger, let's say in a good case, are our wins than our losses. So let's say if our win-loss ratio is 1.5, that means our average win is 1.5 bigger than the average loss. So far, so good. And then we also have an accuracy, which means how many percent of our trades are wins, winners, and how many percent are losers. And the equation, if you put all this together, that gives us a number, and that number must be a positive number in order to have a, an edge, a positive edge, which gives us a chance to be successful in the markets. If this number is not positive, it makes no sense to even risk a quarter on the markets. So, but this is also already quite a few moving parts here. So I'd like to just suggest a very simple idea. How about we imagine that this is just exactly one, which means that our average win is exactly the same as our average loss. All right, well, you may think then how we're gonna make money if my average win is the same as the average loss. Well, the way we're going to make money in this case is that more than 50% of our trades must be winners in order to have a positive number as the edge, right? So it's pretty simple. I put on 1,000 trades if 501 trades are winners and i already won made one dollar as a profit over a large number of trades so let's do this and uh, this very simple scenario can be used in our strategy analyzer as we put in just as an example we're going to put bt one of our products here into this strategy analyzer machine within ninja and uh, we're going to plug in these numbers this scenario and see what we find there are still variables of course that we can play around with most obviously the time frame and also the market and also the examined look back period so these are one two three obvious variables that we can think about so we have to start somewhere so i'm just going to start with a four hour chart which is this is a, a time frame that usually works for me but of course you can feel free to experiment anything that you are interested in trading and then what is very important is that we pick our time frame, not what we like to trade, but where our edge will be. So never pick a time frame just because it's convenient or because you think that's what you have money for. That's not how it works. You have to pick a time frame where actually we do have an edge. Okay, so, and I think 12 years 
is a pretty long time for him to get some meaningful results. But of course, this is just the first step. There's lots of work to be left even after this exercise. But again, we have to start somewhere. And uh, just to repeat, what we're trying to do here is to eliminate this variable by just setting it to one, which means our target and our stop will be the same distance. We're not gonna touch anything and we'll just see which one gets hit first. It's so easy. It's that simple as that. Which one gets hit first? And if the, let's say the target gets hit first more than 50%, well, convincingly more than 50%. And if it gets hit more than 50% convincingly on several markets on a given time frame, or let's, let's suppose even on several time frames, that's a pretty good start. And then we can start, fo start focusing on the other moving parts in our edge. Okay, so I hope that's clear. And uh, so let's do this exercise. And what we're gonna do here, I'm just gonna put this on full screen and uh, so we want to do a couple of things here. I'm going to choose all the futures contracts, select all, maybe about 10 or 12. That gives us a pretty good overview because what we want to do, what we want to find out if our methodology makes sense at all. And uh, while we're in the subject, so what is our methodology? Well, as you know, we trade the reemergence of momentum which means that markets, let's say, move like this. We're not interested in sideways markets. We're waiting for trends, and we're not interested in trying to capture the first leg, which we call the momentum move. What we're interested in is trying to capture the second and the third reemergence of the momentum. And uh, so that's what we're trying to do. The question again, does this make sense? Is there really an edge here? Maybe there isn't but then we should find that out before we start risking money. Okay, so let's do the exercise. And the first step in this whole adventure will be to just to choose backtest for now. Later, we can start focusing on optimization and walk forward, but let's start somewhere. So we're gonna backtest. I'm choosing our BT product, which is the algorithmic automated version of an engine which was built to trade the reemergence of momentum. I'm going to choose a bunch of futures contract because I'd like to know or see if it just if it just works on one instrument and doesn't work on 27 others. Well, that's probably just just a coincidence. Then there's not probably there's not much to that strategy. But if a given strategy works, let's say on 15 out of 20 instruments, well, that's something to start working with. Also. I could set this to two minutes, five minutes, or 12 minutes, doesn't matter. I have to start somewhere, so I'm just picking this as a start, and I don't know what's gonna happen, but let me scroll down and show you the most important setting. This here is where I need to focus now. This one, I'm going to set to zero because I'm not going to have a second contract, a second order set. I'm only working with one order set and even in that one order set i'm just going to put on one contract just to keep it as simple as possible now the next i need to focus on is how many what distance i want my target to be from my entry and what distance i want my stop to be from my entry and remember to keep the win loss ratio we need to enter the same numbers here. So the numbers could be anything, you know, 77 or whatever, but as long as it's the same number, so the stop and the target is the same distance from our entry. We're measuring everything in ATRs, but that's a whole other story. You can start with one or two or three, and our software allows even to, for you to enter any decimal numbers. So I'm just starting with 1.5, which means that I'm gonna put on one contract, and upon entry, I will have a target 1.5 ATRs away from my entry and the same distance for a stop. And I'll just wait which one will get hit first. The other order set is zero, so there's nothing in there. Also, for now, of course, you can play around with this, but for now, I'm just playing 24-7. So I'm not restricting the trades to the open session. Eastern time, but I'm just playing 24 seven 
uh, when the market is open, uh, including the electronic session. One more setting will be important if I scroll down here. Let me just see. So a couple of settings could be important, but I'm just using the, the defaults. The trend definition is potentially, you have a couple of choices here, but let's just keep simple here and use the default setting. And one more other setting is important here, and that will be, well, potentially this, but even more importantly, this one, the maximum number of signals. Because as we know, as the trend develops, let me just use this black area here. So as the trend develops, I'm going to have a number of pullbacks, maybe two, maybe three, maybe 27, who knows. But I don't want to focus on pullbacks coming later in the trend, because as we know, sooner or later, every trend will turn into something else. So I want to focus my attention, a strong, young, healthy trend, which means I'm interested in the maybe the first one, but the second one, third one, maybe the fourth pullback. And then, of course, there are possibly other good trades coming my way there. But since I'm just automatically testing a strategy with the, with the computer, I, I'm going to decide that three is a pretty good number here for me, which means I'm only going to trade and take the first three pullback signals, after which the machine will get switched off automatically and will wait for the next trend. So there will be possibly some area here with no trades. And when if there's another trend, there's a one, two, three, and then switches it off and so on and so on. So this sounds pretty good to me as, on, as a theoretical basis. And of course, everything will, will know more after we ran the strategy. So I think I've entered the settings to start with, the rest is just colors and stuff, so that's not really important. And I'm ready to hit run. And since this is 12 years, I might have to stop the video, but when I come back, we'll have the results right here. And then we can talk about how um, various ways of uh, possible ways to start thinking about the results and, and which way we could move forward. So let's see what happens. Okay, we're almost there. So again, what we did here, we tested 12 years of data on a four hour chart, about maybe 12 futures contracts, and a couple of settings. And most importantly, as a theoretical foundation, we set the target and stop the same distance. So kind of, we don't have to worry about that. We can only focus on the accuracy. And we want to do that because if we, after we look at the data, and we will in just one second, it will give us a pretty good idea if, it's, if it makes sense at all to spend more time on this. Because if everything is uh, just uh, too low or just hopelessly bad, then at least we know that we're not going to waste our time with this. All right, so let's have a look. So again, maybe 10 or 12 instruments, all kinds of futures contracts and let's see the results. And what I want to focus here is the, just this rough number here. And again, the details are not really interested, interesting. I can also focus on this. Right, so total net profit, the combined results, I'm not worried about that. So that's actually, it's not important for me because that's just the adding up all the others. So combined results, not important. So what will be important for me is this this area here. And uh, so what's this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 11, 12, 13 different instruments, 12 years of data. And if you notice, well, much more than 50% of these instruments are producing positive numbers. Well, maybe over 12 years, these three are not really that significant. I'm a couple of thousand dollars, 12 years. Well, that's not, that could be just random. But as we move up, there is a potential of these results not being just completely by random luck. There may be some substance here. So this shows to me that, well, there could be something here because I've eliminated the win-loss ratio and I'm only focusing on the accuracy 
And I could even look at the various individual contracts here, FDAX, NQ did pretty well. So the first couple, the indexes, interestingly, did pretty well. ZBs, financials, and then commodities. So it worked pretty well on the indexes. That's something I may want to pay attention to later on, but I'm still just at the very beginning of my work. And let's see what I find here. So 45% of long trades, well, we've been in a very long decade long bull market, so that's not really surprising that long trades work pretty well in the bull market, but that's fine, that's just part of the game. So there have been almost 500 trades over 12 years, and the percent profitable is 51. But now the next time I run this, probably I'm not going to, probably I'm just going to eliminate these and focus on, maybe just focus on the indexes. And then probably this number 51% will be much higher because the results are best on the indexes. So of course, there's a lot of work still left to do, but I think this little two minute experiment shows that this methodology, trading the reemergence of momentum has merit. It certainly doesn't seem to be totally random, doesn't seem to be totally luck. If we just look at the gross profit, all these instruments made money. And of course, it seems to be based on our initial observation, quite uh, unofficial at this point, of course, because there's a lot of research still left to do. But I think we can say tentatively that it seems to be working best on the indexes. Also, what else can we say? Well, the four hour chart on the indexes seems to be something that we could use to trade. Of course, further experiments can be conducted on other time frames of your choice and see what you find. Also, 12 years is definitely a very long time, so you may want to chop it up into years and use that data for walk forward analysis before you optimize the system, of course. And optimization is a very thin ice. We have to tread carefully. Certain optimization will be needed, but we need to do our best to avoid any curve fitting or overfitting later on. But that's a topic for another video. I hope this will help you get started. And I also hope that I was able to demonstrate that what we do here does make sense. Thank you very much and mindful trading. Mm -hmm.